Will tomorrow morning's commute be anything like today's? I'm Wendy Brockman. Tonight on WB2 News at 9, Dave Frazier has your exclusive pinpoint forecast. Investigators hope one of these men knows what led to a triple murder at a local bowling alley. I'm Ernie Bjorkman, a live update on the investigation that's now nearly a month old. Plus, as T-Rex takes a bite out of I-25, which commute is faster, the highway or side streets? The results of the great race next, only on WB2 News at 9. Watched by more people every week than any other station in Colorado. This is WB2 News at 9. A live look outside the WB2 News studios. We are looking at snow, some wind, and another very cold night. Good evening, everyone. The temperature continues to drop this evening. Yeah, and it will be a while before we see warm weather again. Take a look at this. Saturday, mm -hmm. just two days ago, we actually hit a record high temperature of 72 degrees. But today, a much different story. Our high on this cold and snowy day, 28 degrees. But you had to be out at midnight last night to feel that. For most of this day, the temperature never got out of the single digits, Oof. 9 degrees. WB2 News Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier is tracking this, and Dave... We're not out of the woods yet. No, as you guys just showed, that live picture outside, we have more snow again. If you remember last night, we talked about the bulk of the accumulating snow coming during the morning hours today, that it would make a mess of the morning commute. Then we'd have the scattered stuff. Well, now we've got another weak little disturbance coming through. Here's how things played out today. Broke into periods of sunshine, didn't help at all. And then right here, this thick cloud cover that you see from Denver back to Cheyenne and stretching out to Akron, the radar is not doing a good job of picking up the snow that is falling from this thicker white cloud cover. But it is falling out there. It's just very light stuff. I do not expect this to accumulate to other than you may have to dust off the car and maybe sweep off the, uh, sweep off the driveway one more time. As a matter of fact, we can't show it to you with the radar, but we have a live shot outside from Littleton, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Some finite flakes being whipped around by the wind. This shouldn't last uh, more than a couple of hours, but just like the windows of this vehicle here, you will have to dust things off as you get out first thing tomorrow morning. I expect most of the snow to wrap up around midnight, and then skies clear, and look what happens. Happens. Cold air in place, clear skies, radiational cooling, and the temperatures crash. Five below is the forecasted low for Denver. Colder numbers out on the plains and to the north and east of us. Temperatures in the high country, very cold there too, especially in the valleys. And not only will we have to be dealing with temperatures that read on the mercury to be below zero, but the wind, which is breezy now, I still think will be breezy tomorrow morning, will have to be dealing with bone-chilling wind chills as well. Right now, the calculated temperature outside, seven below. That's what it feels like. And looking the readings as you step out onto the plains. So very, very cold air in place. No big warm-up coming our way and even more chances of snow. We'll talk about all of that coming up in your five-day forecast. But because we're looking at what could be some dangerous wind chills tomorrow morning, for the very latest on tra traffic and weather information, tune in to WB2 News at 6, 7, and 8 a.m. for the latest on traffic and a look at updated wind chills, temperatures, and what you can expect for the day ahead. Thanks, Dave. A very disturbing story out of Greeley tonight. A 77-year-old woman beaten and sexually assaulted. It's a story you'll see only on WB2 News. Reporter Shalene Cockrell joins us live from Greeley. Shalene, police have a suspect now but are not releasing his name. That's right, Wendy. They're not releasing it because they're concerned it could hinder the capture of the adult male that they believe is responsible for the assault. The most unnerving part is that the victim knew her attacker. Around 3 a.m. Sunday morning in this apartment building in North Greeley, an elderly woman, just getting up in the middle of the night to use the restroom, was attacked. He was in her apartment when she got up. Uh, we're not certain how long he'd been in the apartment, and she did not hear him at all. She was just confronted by him when she got up. There were no signs of a forced entry. We don't know exactly how long he'd been in the apartment, and we don't know for sure how he'd been in, but... There was one window that had previously been broken. It was covered by a blanket. So that's a possible mo mode of entry, but we're not certain that's accurate. The perpetrator might have even come in through the front door, but his intent was anything but friendly. It assaulted her, uh, physical force, and subsequently sexually assaulted her. Uh, he left a short time later. There was no indication of attempted burglary, just a face in the dark that meant to do harm. She recognized him. She could not put a name with him. She recognized him as somebody she'd seen before. A follow-up investigation has led us to the identity of the suspect. Uh, we have not picked him up, and his whereabouts is unknown at present. But what police do know is that the outcome could have been much worse. 
she's lucky and she handled herself admirably and we're we're most fortunate that she's safe and uh, we'll assist her in any way we can in getting through the, tom the trauma that she undoubtedly has. This evening when we were at the apartment complex, I just by chance happened to knock on a random door and the victim herself answered. Now, although she did not want to go on camera, she did sit down and talk with me about what happened. She got up in the middle of the night, came out of the bathroom, was grabbed by the throat and beaten down to the floor. Now, the suspect who attacked her told her that she better be quiet. He had a gun and would kill her if she wasn't. Now, her grandson was sleeping in the room next to her, so she was more concerned of waking him and his safety than that of her own. Now, police say that a weapon was not used in the bruises and the beatings that she received, and they did not find a weapon, but she was badly injured. It was obvious that she was very traumatized. Her face was black and blue and green. Her tooth was loose. She had uh, bruises on her forehead. She also said she had bruises and cuts on her neck and upper body and that her back was hurt. But as the officer I spoke with said today, it could have been much worse. Reporting live from Greeley, Shalene Cockrell, WB2 News. Oh, Shalene, that's just terrible. The only good news is that they know who they're looking for. That's right. And in fact, in talking with the victim and also her daughter, apparently this person had been taken in by this family, uh, disappeared for nine or ten months, and then just showed up the other night to do such a horrendous thing. Yep. Just a terrible story. Shalene Cockrell live tonight from Greeley. Tonight, another possible lead into last month's bowling alley murders in Littleton. Police have released a new composite drawing. It's, one, it's of someone seen inside the Broadway lanes the night three employees were shot to death. WB2 News reporter Tyler Lopez has more on the new suspect. On January 27th, three employees of AMF Bowling Centers died here inside the office. They were James Springer, Aaron Gola, and Robert Zayas, all in their 20s, all shot to death by a suspect that is still unknown. On February 4th, Littleton police released this composite drawing of a man who was seen outside the bowling alley after the murders were likely committed. Now it's this man police want help identifying. There are two separate individuals. One was seen outside shortly after uh, the murders most likely, and this person was seen prior to the closing that night. He's a white male, 44 to 55 years old, 5 foot 10 to 6 1, with a medium build and a dark or olive complexion. He has black hair and a mustache and wears black rimmed glasses. He was seen inside the bowling alley talking with the victims on the night of the triple murders. Police say these cases are often cracked by one phone call. Public's been great. They have called in well over 100 tips to us, and we are still working some of those. Uh, obviously, it takes some time to run a number of those down. If you know either man, call Littleton Police. That was Tyler Lopez reporting. Police say they just need a little bit of help. Often, one piece of information can turn a case around. And AMF is still offering a $10,000 reward for info leading to an arrest. Denver's school superintendent wants to know why more crime inside the classroom isn't being reported. Dr. Jerry Wartgau met with 150 of the district principals and Denver's police chief this afternoon. Wartgau wants to know why there was a delay in reporting several recent incidents to Denver police. Chief Jerry Whitman agrees things could be better. The majority of the cases that we need to hear about, we hear about. We don't want to miss any, though, and that's exactly what the superintendent stressed was the need to report for the benefit of the kid and the investigation. Denver Public Schools is working on a streamlined method of reporting crimes to police. Federal charges against a woman who was arrested thanks to a WB2 News viewer. Today, 24-year-old Jennifer Sisney was charged with theft and possession of a stolen firearm. Investigators say she stole ID badges, laptops, airline tickets, and computer hard drives from the Federal Highway Administration Building in Lakewood. There was initial concern because the crime was, that the crime was terrorist-related because the office has sensitive information about Hoover Dam in Nevada. WB2 News broke the story on Friday, and a tip from a viewer led to the arrest. A student from Colorado State University is missing. He was vacationing with friends in Maui, Hawaii. 23-year-old Tori Newland was reportedly at a rock concert there Saturday night, but ran away. His friends say he was incoherent and acting very strangely. His parents in Dallas have offered a $5,000 reward for information leading to their son's whereabouts. Today, divers find the body of a fisherman missing since yesterday. 38-year-old Kevin Campbell was about a quarter mile from shore when he fell into the Boulder Reservoir. Another fisherman who saw Campbell go in helped rescuers find the body.
the fishermen had uh, a GPS mapping system in his boat. And so they were able to download that information and um, kind of pinpoint where the boat started behaving erratically and figured that's where he fell in. It was a very difficult search. The water temperature is so cold, divers could only be in it for 20 minutes at a time. It's a scam, and a local couple almost fell for it. I didn't care what you said. I was going to send you $2,000. Up next tonight, a tempting phone offer proves too good to be true. It's only on WB2 News. Which is faster, I-25 or the side streets? We break out the stopwatch for the great race. I'm for it. How'd you like to get rid of all that computer junk mail before you ever read it? We'll show you how. Plus a new alternative to LASIK eye surgery. I'm Ernie Bjorkman. And I'm Wendy Brockman. You're watching WB2 News at 9, covering Thornton, Basalt, and the entire Rocky Mountain region. Enthusiastic buying on Wall Street pushed the Dow up 177 points today to its best close in six weeks. The Nasdaq also jumped 45 points, while the S&P 500 added another 19. And then coming up at 9.38 tonight, a look at some of the hottest news from Hollywood with Angie Austin's People and Places. Hey, Jared. You've heard this before. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. A phone scam hitting the metro area underscores that advice tonight. It asks you to pay a little to win a lot. WB2 News reporter Don Ward is here with the interview. You'll see only on WB2 News. A Commerce City couple who almost fell for it. Almost, Wendy, until they did a little bit of checking. But just imagine a phone call like this. An offer of enough money maybe even to buy a new house. Something about it, though, didn't quite sound right to the Martinez family. So tonight, they're not wealthy but wiser. Max Martinez, disabled veteran, fixed income. His wife, Joyce, recently lost her job. The phone call they thought was a windfall. Look what we could do for our kids and family. I mean, my whole tunnel was at $200,000. That's what the caller promised. Max had won second prize in a major contest. He was going to get a check for $200,000. All he had to do was wire $2,000 of his own to an address in Canada. Something about prepaid taxes. And I said, what? Alarms went off for Joyce. She wasn't buying it. I didn't care what she said. I was going to send her $2,000. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. We're going to call and verify some of this. <laughs> Joyce was right. She called us. Then we both talked to the Better Business Bureau. You don't have to pay anything up front when you win a prize. Bureau President Gene Herman says any such request is a sign of fraud. It is not legitimate. You have not won. Don't part with your money. Max enters a lot of contests, and the companies who run them often sell names and addresses to other companies. Max is now on what industry insiders unflatteringly call a sucker list. So if you enter one, pretty soon your mailbox will be full, your phone calls will get grow every day. Max is refusing his phone call windfall. Joyce is relieved. And I'm so glad I called Channel 2. You went from cloud 9 all the way to cloud 1. I mean, just like that. And it hurt. It really hurt. There is a phone number recommended by the Canadian Better Business Bureau. Bureaus. You can call 1-888-495-8501 if you have any doubts at all about some sort of contest based in Canada. Better yet, though, just hang up. The Better Business Bureau tells us that Canadian authorities say $30 million in the last five years has left the U.S. and gone to Canada through scams like this one. So there are groups out there just waiting to take your money, just waiting for you to give it away. Don, there was a similar case in Denver just last week. Right, last Thursday, another potential victim, this one in her 80s, got a very similar call. In this case, they even offered to send one out, someone out to her house to pick up the check. She refused. She got away with that one, too, Wendy. Very smart. Mm -hmm. All right, Don Ward live in News Center tonight. Thanks. Mm -hmm. As you heard, the Martinez family called us to help them sort out this scam. If you have a story idea, we want to hear from you. Email us at wb2news at tribune.com or call us at 303-WB2-NEWS. Murder charges against the neighbor of a missing San Diego girl. Seven-year-old Danielle Van Dam has been missing for three weeks now. Today, police declared her dead. Danielle's parents have held out hope of finding her alive. I informed them that it was my intention uh, to file a murder charge, and they cried. And it was very difficult for them. 
Investigators say traces of Danielle's blood were found on her neighbor's clothes and in his motorhome. The search for her body continues. A former NBA player turns himself in on reckless manslaughter charges. Police say Jason Williams was twirling a loaded shotgun inside his mansion on Valentine's Day when it went off, striking and killing his limo driver. Williams, now a sports commentator, is out of jail tonight on a $250,000 bond. Testimony today tries to show how insane Andrea Yates really was when she killed her five children. Her lawyers and family are trying to prove that Yates suffered from postpartum depression when she drowned the children in the bathtub. A jail nurse told the Houston jury that Yates asked to attend her children's funerals and wanted to cut her hair in the shape of a crown. Yates has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. From the forecasters of WB2 News, here's your exclusive Pinpoint Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Dave Brazier. Late last week and through the weekend, we were telling you all about the nice sunny weather in the 70s to get out and enjoy it because a big change was on the way. And whether you believe us or not, the reality was out there this morning. Snow, cold, sticking around, no warm-up in the five-day forecast. As a matter of fact, it looks pretty cold and there's more snow on the way. Let's get to work with a check on the Almanac today. And as Ernie and Wendy pointed out at the top of the newscast, our high temperature of 28 degrees today came just after midnight last night. Temperature at about 4 o'clock in the morning was 11, and then from 5 o'clock in the morning through the rest of the day, we never got out of the single digits. Records of 74 and 11 below will stay in place. Your sunrise tomorrow, 637, it will set at 549. A live look outside right now, and we are looking out this is Parker Road right out here. You can see the traffic move along. This is the King Supers parking lot. And I wanted to show you this live picture because you see the parking lot is recoated once again with snow. So an additional dusting is certainly not out of the question as we go through this little period of snow that we're going to have for the next couple of hours. And as you get closer to the foothills and those communities on the south side of town where measurable amounts are always more favorable, you may be able to measure up to about an inch. I'll show you radar in just a second, but look at the temperatures. Four at DIA, four here at the studios humidity is up there and we've got that lifting component blowing again out of the northeast at 12 miles an hour let's stay with temperatures for a second look at the readings single digits mainly on the eastern P plains pueblo is well we'll get to casey in a minute pueblo is 13 right now look at the temperatures single digits 21 in gunnison it's warmer in gunnison right now it's warmer in montrose than it is here in denver and then let's factor in the wind and give you the wind chill that feels like temperature out there it feels like 12 below right now here in denver the same in the springs not bad in fort collins because the wind isn't as strong as a matter of fact the strongest wind is blowing out here on the eastern plains and the wind chill numbers represent that tonight and tomorrow morning especially for those kids that are going to have to wait for that bus tomorrow morning for school even if it's on a little bit of a delay make sure they're dressed appropriately because the wind chills will be in the teens below zeros here's the satellite picture broke into some sunshine today but again little weak disturbance coming over top of us right now is generating all the clouds here and under this white deck of clouds snow is falling in the high country through denver back to cheyenne and out to akron it is moving in a south southeasterly direction so we'll continue to keep snow showers in the forecast now the radar doesn't see it but take a look at this our exclusive pinpoint forecast does see it the blue is the snow it's over top of us it had it predicted at nine o'clock and we've got the snow showers in place but watch what happens as i put this into motion the snow showers will drop to the south very little accumulation overnight the sky is clear temperatures crash and although from sun up to sundown i expect a good deal of sunshine tomorrow we may start with a little bit of cloud cover early it's not going to help us warm up look at the forecast at highs tomorrow basically 20s in the eastern plains teens 20s uh, up in the high country and along the western slope hey it's in the 30s there if you want to warm up get over the mountains and head out west tonight snow will come to an end if you get into the western communities and south you may be able to measure up to an inch every place else just a recoding clearing skies and look at the number five below zero for denver outlying areas are going to be even colder than that mostly sunny tomorrow a little bit breezy in the afternoon and that's why i'm talking about watch out for those wind chills it will be windier near the foothills 22 for the high and we may struggle to get to that five degrees on the plus side as we get into wednesday morning clouds will increase through the day wednesday we'll make it i think to the freezing mark or just above at 33 and then Wednesday night into Thursday, another round of what could be a little bit of accumulating snow. We'll keep an eye on that. Then we'll get a break Thursday afternoon. And by Friday, another round of snow possible as temperatures all week until about Saturday, 
stay below normal. 40, even 46, if you were looking at the Almanac, normal's 48. Oh. And we'll need that sunshine all, all of it this on is Saturday to get to 46. A great reminder for newcomers who have moved to our state mm -hmm. how drastic the changes oh can gosh. be this time of the year. You can, I've worked in a lot of places in the country, and you can travel the country and hear a lot of people say tongue-in-cheek, if you don't like the weather, wait a minute, it'll change. That is really oh. true here. Because last, really night, true last here. night the stars are out. Oh, I know. It's in beautiful. hours. Oh. In hours it can change here. Wow. We love it. And I love it. It's it keeps it interesting, challenge. doesn't it? It yeah. keeps it interesting. And we can Thanks. go home now. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> A mad stampede at the airport in Salt Lake City also tonight. Tired of porn, contests, and other spam junking up your email? I'm Casey Curry. I'll have a local solution to the problem coming up. At 9.38, Austin Powers is back, baby, but this time there's controversy over the title. And cloning your kitty cat. Find out when it could happen. Close. The White House is denying a report that the FBI has a suspect in the anthrax mailings. The letters were mailed late last year. Two were sent to Capitol Hill. Five people nationwide died from inhaling the anthrax. Hundreds of government employees and postal workers were treated. There have been no arrests in the case. But unfortunately, there, there still are several suspects. It's not as if there's only one. And so the FBI is continuing its investigative efforts. That story, I think, was a little overreaching in saying there's just one. Fleischer says the FBI has conducted hundreds of interviews in the case. A Washington, D.C. paper said the suspect is a U.S. scientist from Delaware. The latest now in the war on terrorism, President Bush today expressing confidence that Pakistan is doing enough to round up Daniel Pearl's killers. And the U.S. military is considering ways to increase security in Afghanistan, but says it doesn't want to play the role of peacekeeper. Colorado Governor Bill Owens is in Washington, D.C., meeting with other governors about ways to prevent terrorism. We're coming along towards the six-month anniversary of September 11th. I think we're much better positioned today than we were obviously before September 11th in terms of funding, in terms of professionals on the ground, in terms of prevention, and also in terms of going after the people who, uh, who are after us. Owens and the others met with Tom Ridge, the Director of Homeland Security, and President Bush. Vice President Dick Cheney says he is confident the U.S. will win the war on terrorism. He made the comment while speaking at his old stomping grounds today, the Wyoming State Legislature. Cheney interned there in 1965. At the time, uh, I was paid uh, $300 for a 40-day session. That was uh, slightly less than a dollar an hour, which is probably more than I was worth. <laughs> Cheney later became a congressman in Wyoming. A controversial bill affecting Colorado classrooms goes to the state Senate tomorrow for debate. That measure would mandate that public schools teach students patriotism, but would let local school boards determine the curriculum. Meantime, a House committee defeats a proposal that would have raised taxes paid by visiting professional athletes when they play in Colorado. If approved, the money would have been earmarked to buy school computers. Have you ever wondered if avoiding I-25 during T-Rex will save you time? I'm Don Ward. Do you take the side streets or do you stick with the stop and go? We'll put them both to the test. That's coming up. Can't wait for that. They came. Now they're all leaving. We'll show you the record crush at Salt Lake City's airport. At a 945, new findings discover a perfect boost for the brain. And it could be in your kitchen. America is discovering how easy it is to go online with America Online. Welcome. Very easy to get started. You've got mail. Free 24-hour customer service. Instant messages are great. Parental controls give me peace of mind. And don't forget to visit AOL's local guide to over 200 U.S. cities. You'll find great information about local restaurants, shopping, and more. For your hometown or places you travel, Digital City on AOL is your number one local guide. America Online is a nice place to live. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. It's that time of year in Denver, and because of the tremendous purchasing power of Ed Bozar Chevrolet 2001 South Vanna and our other four great General Motors agencies, I'm able to offer you 50 2001 certified program blazers for less than $18,888. The payments are less than $300 a month. Come on out to Ed Bozar Chevrolet 2001 South Vanna. These are the best sport utility vehicle purchases I've ever made.
I think one of the biggest things about having a Welcome back to our second half hour. In this day and age of T-Rex, it may feel like you spend more time stopped in traffic than going. This is true. So are you better off waiting it out on the highway or trying your luck with the side streets? We put that question to WB2 News reporter Don Ward. He's live now with an experiment we call the Great Race. Don? Well, Wendy and Ernie, it's something commuters think about every day, maybe even twice a day. The big T-Rex trouble spot right now is that lane shift southbound at Hamden. So we took the drive, and we call it, as you said, the Great Race. From Broadway, southbound, through the trouble spot, all the way through the Tech Center, and down to Dry Creek Road. So which is better? You can take that straight shot on I-25, or you can try to weave and zigzag your way down the side streets. One morning, two cars, two routes, same destination. Near Broadway at I-25, I'm in one car. In the other, WB2 News operations manager Ed Lozano, always in a hurry, says he knows the side streets. Southbound Logan, coming up on I-25, and all is well, doing about 35 miles an hour. I'll take the highway all the way. Three minutes, and I've done one mile. First few minutes on the highway, no problem. Smooth sailing, we're going the speed limit, but there's trouble ahead. Or we can take this Hampton and cut through. Uh, no, uh, you know, because uh, there's no light down there. Right. Ed's got a lot of choices to make. My route's decision-free, but no longer trouble-free. As expected, we're in the T-Rex lane shift, and we're crawling. Eastbound on Hampton right now, getting ready to make our way along the back roads along I-25. We're going to go along Happy Canyon. If this is more like it. This is practically a parking lot. Since there's traffic up ahead, we'll bypass uh, Happy Canyon, and we'll go south on University now. Ed's moving. We're not. It's wide open. About 20 minutes in, and we finally hit 225. Not too bad. We're going about five miles an hour. He's watching radar coming north. Uh -huh. A school zone near Quincy and University. Ed's first slowdown. Doesn't cost him much time. We're getting ready to go eastbound on Arapaho. 20 minutes so far. Finally, we're in the clear. Smooth sailing once again. The meeting point is on Dry Creek Road. Now we're on Dry Creek. Ed's closing in, but he's not the only one. Oh, nice. Look at this. We both arrive at the same time. It's a tie. 29 minutes. Hey, you did pretty well. 29 minutes. The back way and the highway, dead even. Overall, how was your trip? It was great. The roads were wide open. Uh, we didn't really have any problems, no major slowdowns. Ed kept moving. A little more work, but a little less frustration than my stop and go. He says he may keep sidestepping T-Rex. You know, to save a couple minutes on my drive, maybe. Now, that was just one drive on one day, and there are so many variables that any minor problem even on either route could have really slowed things way down. But as we were putting this piece together, we got a lot of anecdotal evidence from folks who say that taking the side streets, even though you keep moving, seems to take almost as long as the stop and go method on the highway. So maybe the important thing is just that psychological plus of being moving all the time, Wendy and Ernie. I think that's it. I yeah. think it is. And yeah, I, it feels better. And I think people in the neighborhoods would love people to stay on the highway. That's another side problem. You take those side streets, people live there, kids play there, so yeah, there's that concern also. Maybe you're better off just waiting it out on the highway if there's nothing major going on. Yeah, if there's on. no accident, for the most of the time, you're it's not too bad. No, I'll yeah. just get a good CD in and uh, yeah. lay back and relax. Or a book on tape, whatever, whatever gets you going. <laughs> there you go. All right, thanks. Very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Thanks, Don. We do have a closure on I-25 to tell you about. It's on southbound I-25 in Castle Rock from Meadows Parkway to the old US-85. It'll be closed overnight tomorrow and Wednesday. Crews are doing some bridge work. It is a mad exodus. There are huge lines at Salt Lake City's airport. Now that the games are over, Olympic visitors are heading home. There are record crowds at the airport with waiting times up to four hours. Some lines were so long today, they stretched out of the terminal and out out onto the sidewalk. And on this day, when everyone was leaving, crews began tearing down many of the Olympic venues. The governor of Utah says the games have given Salt Lake City and the state a new confidence. And the darling of the ice during the Winter Olympics is hitting the big time. Figure skater Sarah Hughes, Hooray! who at 16 won the gold medal, will adorn the Wheaties cereal box. At the unveiling today, she swapped Olympic stories with gymnast Mary Lou Retton. The Sarah Hughes Wheaties box will be on our local shelves sometime in March. And the two other darlings, Canadian pair skaters Jamie Soleil and David Pelletier of Canada, have also signed a big endorsement deal. 
Guess what? They're going to be hawking crest whitening strips. <laughs> they have a lot to smile about. Good news if you're tired of all the junk email you get, a local company will now filter it before it gets to your computer. And we'll tell you why the new Austin Powers movie had to change its name. Tomorrow the truth comes. Hi, I'm Angie Austin with People in Places. Russell Crowe is angry at U.S. anti-smoking laws. He's been smoking since he was 10 and says he can't live in L.A. because you're, quote, never allowed to smoke. Rumors say the next Austin Powers film will be called A License to Shag after MGM protested the original title, Gold Member. Because there are so many acts, the Grammys will be a half hour longer this year for a total of three and a half hours. Some of the performers, U2, Bob Dylan, NSYNC, and Billy Joel. The night before, Billy Joel is performing at the concert for Artists' Rights. He's upset about the record industry's ability to tie musicians to long-term, low-paying contracts. Thanks, Angie. Are you a victim of spam? No, not the canned meat. We're talking about that annoying, unsolicited junk mail we all get online. Right now, you probably just delete them. But as WV2 News reporter Casey Curry shows us tonight, there is another option. Chances are, you've got spam right now, promising everything from increased sexual energy to consolidating your debt. Spam is something Dave Harris knows all about. Every morning I'd come in and I'd have 12 to 15 new messages, and I knew 10 of them were worthless. Some internet service providers are reducing their customers' daily dose of spam. Denver-based ViaWest Internet Services is offering something new to their business and residential customers. It's called Spam Be Damned. Some customers getting in excess of 100 messages a day. ViaWest partners with an industry standard, Brightmail, to block and filter unsolicited junk mail in real time. They don't read your email. They write software that catches up to 80% of the incoming spam. The spammers have become very sophisticated. You know, they won't send spam from any one uh, email address. And so therefore, you know, they're ch constantly changing. So you have to keep constantly changing yourself. Dave's already seeing a huge difference. Now I get maybe one or two a week. Less spam means more productive time on your computer. Casey Curry, WB2 News. Hi. It is a pain. You Wait, seem to I get do. more of it than I do. You feel a lot I get of it. 12 or 15 a day, everything from pornography to, uh, you know, get out of debt free and all these things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wish I had something that could delete all that mm -hmm. because uh, it's amazing. And a lot of them are, are addressed, you know, like to you, oh, Ernie, yeah. read this. Exactly. And I think it's from somebody that I know. And now suddenly you're in all those things coming up and coming up and you're on the list now. So. But you can do something about yeah, it. Yeah, you can. Many internet service providers offer the program Casey told us about or similar ones but you have to ask for it. That's the key. Yeah. All right. A sign the recession might be ending. Home sales are on the rebound. The average price of a home in the metro area is at a record high. The average home resold for more than $265,000 this month. That beats the old record set last July. But some experts say the price is inflated by the sale of expensive homes in Highlands Ranch and Lone Tree. New national numbers today. Home sales jumped 16% in January, the biggest one-month jump ever. More than 6 million homes were sold. The median price jumped to $151,000, up from $137,000 a year ago. The abs are hitting the ice again, but they're still waiting for the star Olympic athletes to return. We'll tell you when Sackick and company suit up. But first, one company says it can have a commercial pet cloning operation up and running in a few years. But is it something we want? I was sitting in the front of the class squinting like this. You'd be surprised how many children have problems seeing the blackboard, and they don't even know it. I think it's very important to be able to trust who you go see and know that you're getting good quality. I really enjoy helping people see better. Walmart has state-of-the-art equipment and quality brand-name eye care products. I didn't have to squint anymore. I could see. Get a professional eye exam from the independent doctor of optometry at Walmart. Personally, I think I look quite distinguished in classes. With over 300 different kinds of fresh fruits and vegetables and dozens of delicious ways to choose them, you can find everything you always wanted and things you never even knew you wanted. Don't you wish all life was that simple? Looking for something fresh? Albertsons. It's your store. 
Imagine me and you, I do. I think about you day and night. So sir, can I help you, sir? No, thanks. So I'm good. Fest is back. Dive into Red Lobster's mouth-watering celebration of your favorite lobster dishes and succulent new creations. Starting at just $10.99, Red Lobster, go overboard. Good evening again. This is Chief Meteorologist Dave Frazier with a time lapse. Most of the accumulating snow wrapped up early this morning. We may see a passing flurry tonight, but the picture of what happened today is right there with the steam coming off the buildings downtown. Cold, cold for the next couple of days. I'll have the chilling details in your five-day forecast next on WB2 News. If you break the law in my city, Robert De Niro, I will put you behind bars. <coughs> Eddie Murphy, <laughs> Renee Russo. What? You are the TV cops. You don't think we're real cops? Freeze, LAPD! Whenever there's a crime. Let's go ahead, make my day. Whenever there's a camera. <laughs> two real cops Stop. are ready to act. That's great TV. Showtime, rated PG-13. Starts Friday, March 15th. Now at Doctors Vision Works, get a professional eye exam by a licensed doctor of optometry for just $19. Then get two complete pairs of glasses for just $99, both for you or one for a friend. And we offer one-hour lab service at Doctors Vision Works. Watching a great drama, you get everything. Drama is life and the characters that uh, fill life. You get love, war, crime, fear. Not enough donuts at the craft service table. Drama has to have its points, has to have its high points and its low points, and it has to have some sort of rhythm to it. It's pretty dramatic. It's all of those ingredients kind of coiled like a rubber band, and you never know when it's going to snap. Look who's following friends. Everybody loves Raymond. Tonight at 10.30 on WB2. You know, dental bills for children can add up in a hurry, but there are ways you can hold down the extra costs. Hello, I'm Tom Green. And I'm Laura Thornquist. Coming up on WB2 News at 6, 7, and 8 a.m., we'll look at low-cost ways to improve your child's dental health. Also, part two of one courageous woman's battle against domestic abuse. Plus, how to stop your pets from keeping you up all night. Mm. Can't wait to see that. <laughs> Join us in the morning. The founder of the Vail Ski Resort is fighting cancer of the esophagus tonight, one of the deadliest forms of that disease. 77-year-old Pete Seibert was the driving force behind the creation of the resort after serving in the 10th Mountain Division in World War II. Doctors say chemotherapy has controlled some of Seibert's tumors. Health Tonight, the March of Dimes reports that obese women are more likely to have children with birth defects. The study links obesity to birth defects, premature birth, and other severe health problems in infants. However, a federal scientist says the findings are weak and that no definite link can be made. If you need a late-day brain boost, you may want to reach for a cup of coffee. New findings discover that people who drank a cup of coffee before a late afternoon memory test did better than people who drank decaf before the exam. If you don't like coffee, any caffeine drink will do. No kidding. Caffeine mm. will get me going again. An update now on the chances you could clone your own dog or cat. The company that cloned its first cat in December, dubbed Copycat, now expects to clone a dog by the end of the year. And now a company executive says commercial cloning is only about two years away. Caffeine, that is a new one on me. Take a look at this. Satellite and radar picture. You're not going to see a lot of blue indicated here on the radar because the snow is finite. The radar's not doing a good job picking it up. But it is snowing out there from Cheyenne down to Denver, working its way to Castle Rock. It will continue to move to the south and southeast. So we'll have this passing snow. Again, I'm not going to rule out that you may be able to measure up to an inch in some spots, but in most places, this is just going to be a recoding. And right now, as it's dropping on Interstate 25, People moving out and about are finding they have to slow down just a little bit. So watch out for that. But here's the good news. From 9 o'clock tonight, we put it into motion. Snow moves away. By tomorrow morning, we'll wake up with a good deal of sunshine. We'll stay sunny all day long, but it will not help us warm up. Here's your five-day forecast now. Bone chilling tonight. Five below is the overnight forecast of low temperature. By the way, the record low for tomorrow morning, eight below. Set back in 1962. So... 
It could be close to a record low temperature early tomorrow morning. And, of course, WB2 News goes on the air at 6 a.m. And tune in. You can see what the temperature is at that time to see how close we are. Oh, Online I can't is wait to see. Very well, this won't be this cold. We might as well set a record. It all feels we, the same. We, <laughs> you're right. Five <laughs> below, eight below, what's the difference? Uh, snow chances again uh, midweek and then later in the week. But the bottom line is just a, just a real cold. But it's nice we have snow because my crocus won't oh, die. Oh, your crocus. Oh, good. That's Before right. It's came up. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'll, that'll help. That will. I think. Up next, the professional football season is finally over. But the pain remains how it plays a major role in a player's life. The Golden Boys won't be back on the ice for the Avs till tomorrow night, but winning the gold is the topic at the Avs practice today. Four Avalanche players were in the gold medal game yesterday in Salt Lake City. One for the U.S., three for the winning Canadian team. Those players get to skip today's practice. Even Patrick Waugh, though, is talking about that gold medal game, and he skipped the Olympics to spend more time with his kids. Remember when I said that I mean, Canada had a lot of depth, and, and I certainly confirmed that by seeing them winning the gold medal. It was, a, it was a great game, you know, 5-2 doesn't indicate the way it, it turns out, but it, it's great for Canadian hockey, there's no doubt about it. We were standing on some chairs when the, when the goals were scored, and there was some taunting going on, and uh, unfortunately now I have to take uh, the ribbing for four more years. <laughs> Anything but gold is considered as a failure, so like, uh, you know, I'm real proud of those guys. They, they played very well, and we're very happy as a country. We get it next time, right, in the U.S.? Yeah. NFL season came to an end three weeks ago. Lots of players are still feeling the effect of the season. Playing with pain is a fact of life in the NFL. In this WB2 exclusive, WB2 sports anchor Kevin Kruger tells us the pain the players feel can last a lifetime. Blitz on the way, Greasy drops back, throws, McCaffrey's open, and makes a sensational... There's a reason the average NFL career is less than four years. The amount of pounding a player's body takes during the course of a season is tremendous. People don't realize that what a long, grueling season it is. Uh, for players, uh, you know, it's a mental thing, but also the physical thing is incredible. When they really look at it, they're physically pounding themselves in one fashion or another from April to January. Pass over the middle is going to be incomplete. Antonopoulos says he recommends that Broncos players rest and relax for at least a month following the end of the season. But this measure doesn't ease the pain over the course of a player's career. And no one knows that better than former Bronco Mark Schlereth who underwent 28 surgeries during his playing career. The wear and tear over the length of a career is going to be something that's going to be substantial with you for the rest of your life. Uh, you name it, it hurts. Knees, ankles, my back kills me on a daily basis. And he especially well, yeah. notices it in his hands, which so, were essential in his role as an offensive thing, lineman. Hey, it's Bro been a year, almost a year and a half since I, I played my last game. And my, the, the swelling in my hands is still coming out on a daily basis. Uh, I was telling you earlier, none of my Super Bowl rings even come close to fitting. To help deal with pain during the season, players will sometimes take painkillers either orally or through injection. But NFL teams are very careful about how and when they administer them. There are some types of injuries that can be injected. And it's not a common thing as the media sometimes makes it be. Besides, pain-killing injections are only a temporary relief. For most, the pain never really goes away. But most players will tell you the price they pay is worth it. I'm not happy about the everyday pain that I have, but I understand why, and, and it was my choice, and I understand that, and, uh, and I can live with that. Kevin Kruger, WB2 Sports. Man, 28 surgeries. Schlereth is now a TV and radio analyst. You can contact him. Go to our website wb2.com and click on the as seen on WB2 News icon. Well, I'm not sure if we should get used to Jack Cuss being with the Rockies because ever since he arrived in a trade from Arizona, we've been hearing he might get traded again. Jack Cuss is an outstanding hitter and, well, that's the knock on him. All he can do is hit. He's not a good outfielder. Most people feel he should be a DH in the American League, but he's pretty happy Arizona traded him to the Rockies in the National League. Uh, I mean, it's, they're both new teams. It's kind of a good situation either way. Um, the Diamondbacks are a great team, but the Rockies, too. I mean, it's a great situation to be in. It's tough. There's a lot of real good yeah. players, and 
all I can really control is how hard I work and go out there and play hard every day. Take a lot of pride in my hitting and hopefully I could bring another bat to a solid lineup already. Got an impressive list of inductees tonight in the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. The man in charge of the Orange Crush defense, Joe Collier, tops the list. By the way, WB2's Tom Green is emceeing the event tonight. How about our Dodge play of the day? I like this one, too. Portland and Philadelphia watch the alley-oop and the one-hander by Rasheed Wallace. Is that nice? You can see it again in slow motion. Damon Stoudemire with a nice pass to Rasheed Wallace. The one-handed grab and the jam. Now that is not, yeah, Monday nights, it's always tough because there's not too many yeah. games going on, but we got a good play of the yeah. day tonight. You looks, did. Looks like they the pie gravity. Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, All right. You Thanks. and I don't, but they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. And we're going to update our top stories tonight. In Greeley, police are looking for a sexual assault suspect. The man attacked a 77-year-old woman. It happened early yesterday morning inside that woman's apartment. And Littleton police hope a new composite sketch will bring answers in a triple murder. Today they released a new composite drawing of someone seen inside the Broadway lanes the night three employees were shot to death. Hopefully it helps. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us tonight. Don't forget to wake up to double.